Hello Floss Tube friends and Instagram friends and all the other people who watch this channel. My name is Susan Stanley and this is Susan Stanley Stitch in Time. I love to talk about samplers, quilts, historic textiles, and all things fabric. So if you're interested in a little bit of history and some stitching, I hope you'll join me today. Uh, thank you for those new subscribers. I appreciate you. I appreciate your comments. I appreciate the interaction. It's what this is all about for me. So I'm glad you're here. I hope you're having a wonderful September. This is floss tube number 22. This month is probably one of my favorite months. It's my birthday month, which it's good to keep having birthdays. So enough said with that. Uh, it's Sampler September and September Sampler Soiree hashtag month, which if you've watched my channel, you know I'm all about reproducing historic samplers and quilts and studying the textiles and, and all that goes into uh, making the original and then reproducing them. So it's one of my favorite months. Now, having said that, you'll see my stitching time was a little bit just, I was a little bit distracted from intense stitching time, but I still had a lot of fun. And I had to, of course, find, because it is this sampler month, I had to find a really concise I went on the hunt for a really concise definition of what is a sampler because we celebrate samplers this month and we're all excited about stitching them but we don't always have a really firm definition and I have books and I have books and I have books and they all have a chapter or preface with pages and pages describing what makes something a sampler but I thought you know who better to reach out to than the queen of samplers and the owner of the shop where samplers rule, and that is uh, Jean Lee, owner of The Attic. And so I reached out to Jean a few weeks ago and I said, I told her what I was planning and I said, can you tell me in your experienced words how you would define a sampler? And I want to read to you what she wrote, because I think sometimes we get caught up in the stitching and we're not always sure what we're stitching or why. And I always love the what and the why. And if I know the who of who stitched something, that's even better. So let's see. This is what Jean said. What is a needlework sampler? To me, several things come to mind. It was at one time a demonstration of one's needlework or embroidery skill recorded on cloth or linen. It was used as a teaching tool of both the alphabet as well as religious verses, and most importantly, of basic needlework. Many samplers include biblical verses. It was also created as a personal reference as printed patterns weren't available and the needleworker would record, i.e. embroider, favorite mo motifs or patterns randomly on a linen, linen cloth. These are known as spot motif samplers. A sampler was often used as a reference for employment or as demonstration of one's preparedness as a wife. Most importantly to me, and I think for all of us, samplers are a recording of women's history as it is many times the only history of a female that was recorded. So whether or not you want to connect with that, I think it's really great to know and, uh, and understand that there is such a significance to these pieces that we stitch, that we that have been reproduced by the gracious designers who spend countless hours checking boxes and making these charts available to us. Um, 
just to know that we have so much available. We have books, we have resources, we have education, and a lot of these early sampler stitchers didn't have means or any of those things. And this was, in some ways, their ticket to a better life. Uh, so, for what it's worth, you know, there's always there's always uh, different variations on that definition, but I think that's a really good, solid explanation of what is a sampler. Of course, there were boys that stitched samplers. There are there were older women who were instructors who stitched samplers, and older women probably who stitched them for pleasure. Um, but I think I think as we dive into Sampler September, or that as we finish out Sampler September, it's kind of nice to have a, a good definition to hold on to. Um, I, also, uh, I also thought myself about what attracts me to a sampler. And of course, so many, so many samplers have alphabets. And really what I'm talking about today are the reproduced, the samplers reproduced from antiques. There are a ton of fabulous samplers that are original designs that people are coming up with all the time. And this definition probably doesn't hold true to those, but there's probably a more unique definition for the new original designed samplers because we, we kind of use that term loosely. So anyway, what makes a sampler stand out to me? Well, I'm definitely, you know, drawn to the alphabet and some of the very simple early marking samplers that are just alphabets I find very charming. But there is a motif on samplers that really just sings to my heart and there are always tons of flowers, there's frequently birds, there's sometimes other animals, but the samplers with the house for some reason call my name. I just love them. And Maybe it's because of the cozy comfort feeling of a home and maybe it's because I think of the little children stitching the samplers who either were maybe far away from home in a boarding school, they were possibly orphans in an orphanage, or they were in a home being taught by probably their mother to or an aunt to stitch and acquire skills so that they could broaden their horizons as an adult. I looked up the significance of a house in art, and I'm gonna put in some pictures of some classic artwork that you're gonna recognize. And I'll try to put it in and keep talking. We'll see if I can do that. But houses, cottages, homes appear in pastoral scenes and city scenes through, all throughout art and pretty much all over the world. And I think there is a feeling that you get and hopefully it's a good, happy, secure, warm feeling when you think about a home. And I think we, we who stitch and like to decorate our homes, we uh, immediately those feelings are, are sparked when we when we think of our little nest where we keep all our treasures and um, all our stitching goodies. Uh, so there really wasn't anything meaningful in a sampler or a piece of art that has a home other than it was a home. And it was a way of showing the architecture of that time, either intentionally or unintentionally. And just connecting the the artist, the stitcher, the person to something that meant something important to them. Now there are other buildings featured in samplers and I'm not going to talk about those today. There's um, churches, um, King Solomon's temple is frequently shown, so there's a whole other area to look at at some point in, in buildings in samplers. But I wanted to look today at some charts that I have, and I have a lot because apparently I really like 
poems in samplers. Some of them I've started, some of them I haven't, some of them are kitted, and I'm just going to go through them because to me, when I think of samplers, I think of alphabets and I think of houses. Um, and then all the other motifs are, are just icing on the cake. So the first one I want to show you, so sit back and relax. I don't know if this is going to be a long video. It, it likely might be. Um, the first one I want to show you today is Sarah Hopwood by the Scarlet House. And what's not to love about a checkered house? So 1847, the birds and the flowers are charming. The animals are wonderful. But that house, and it's a red house. So I'm assuming that house, I wonder if it was Sarah's house. Maybe it was a house in her where she, vicinity where she lived. Anyway. Gorgeous. This is by the Scarlet House. Someday this will be stitched. And this is taken, this is from a sampler, a larger sample, which the antique you can see on the back. Sampler Roll by Needlework Press. And I've just always loved that row of houses. And then the little alphabet below. It's charming. I love the finish on this. I think it would be spectacular in a long dough bowl with maybe some little cottages around it, 3D ceramic. Just love this. At summer school, um, I don't remember who it was that somebody had finished this, I think on a very high count, 56 count, and it was just spectacular. So that's by Samplers Remembered. Sorry, I think I said need to work press earlier, I'm sorry. Samplers remembered, love this. Letia Jane Andrews, 1836, by Queenstown Samplers. Look at those roses and those houses. Now, is that a barn and a house? Is that side by side houses? What was the significance of those homes to this stitcher? This is reproduced from, a pen, this is a Pennsylvania sampler, and the stitcher was 12 years old. Oh, and it does say that the two large buildings, a blue house with a white picket fence and a Quaker meeting house. So just what was significant to that stitcher, what meant something to her. Mary Inglis, a Scottish house sampler by Mary Wind Farm. I want to stitch this and I'm very intrigued by all the houses with blue roofs. And there seem to be quite a few, I'm trying to get rid of that glare, sorry. I think Brendan of Fox and Rabbit was going to start this, and I don't know if he did on his birthday. I love this so much. I think I have the, the linen. And of course, I love Scottish samplers too, so. Marion Robertson by the Scarlet Letter, 1834, another Scottish sampler. And you, it's interesting, a lot of these samplers have the front, the front grass, the yard, that, the grass that a lot of people don't like to stitch, and then the gates. This one is a scarlet letter. I love scarlet letter charts. They're, there's probably not one of these that I don't love. That's why I bought it. So. Really unique house. And, I haven't read all the information on this and I don't I don't expect that I should share that all with you, but I'm sure there's some information on the home and wouldn't it be so amazing to find the home, have pictures and have it documented. Yeah, really wonderful. Little House Needleworks, the Anne Goodall sampler, an English sampler with two houses. This is, uh, like I said, from England from Yorkshire and those golden houses. And you can see how the black 
has migrated. I'm going to talk about black at some point because it's such an interesting dye. Anyway, lovely, lovely. Oh, this is from, um, yeah, Little House Needleworks, I think I told you that. I want to start all of these right now. Do you think I'll have a wall with these? I don't know. I would love to. Uh, Elizabeth Easton, I think I've shared this before. I love that checkered house. That must be her, have been her way of representing brick. Of course, there's the alphabet. This is a Scottish sampler, and this is by the Assemblery. Just another phenomenal company that reproduces antique samplers. And so many, now this one doesn't have the fence. It's a big, huge cat. And then the little house. Kind of some Celtic heart shapes. And of course, there's the alphabet. This is a new one that I love so much. I would love to start it today. The Anne McFarland Sampler 1827 by the Wishing Thorn. I love the way the houses are bordering the alphabet. It reminds me of a quilt, I guess, because that's where my brain goes. But this two-tone, I love the blue. I love that deep kind of indigo. I just love it. So I could stitch a house chart a year, probably till the rest, for the rest of my life. Another one that I've kitted is the Mary Barr sampler. There's lots of people who have finished this. This is a big sampler, actually huge. Uh, there's the, the fence, the gate, and then the animals on the lawn, but it's just gorgeous. And I love a red house, but those checkerboard houses are pretty spectacular too. So a wall of house samplers someday in my future. Another favorite sampler with the house is Amy Eliza Herbert sampler. I bought this from the attic. And there's that checker house again. And this is, I believe, a Scottish sampler. I love the I love the richness that the colors impart when they're on a darker linen. This is like a week's gray or, I don't know, taupey color. I love that. I have, I have the DMC pulled. And there's, there's that blue again. That kind of, I think that, that is a Lancaster blue that's kind of popping out. This one is on the short list to be started. The Pink Cottage School. I love this and I love that Liz Matthews offered both options of uh, doing it exactly like the original or changing it up a little bit. I know not everybody likes to reproduce samplers. I've, I've had people say to me that they are concerned that a reproduction might be pawned off or tried uh, presented as an original as, as an an antique. I think if you know enough about linen and threads, you can tell if the linen is is a modern linen or a very coarsely woven older antique linen. I, I don't think it's that hard. If, if it's pristine and they're saying it's from the 1700s and they're not charging, you know, I, I don't know. But I, I, that's not my intention when I, I just love I just love the way they look and I love the history behind them. Elizabeth Yeager's another one from the Assemblery. This is kind of a pinkish house as well. And I think, I think, you know, a wall of samplers with houses in all different shades would be, ooh. I love this one. I do have the 
I'm gonna have the silk for that. Oh. And there's again that, there's this blue. I need to look into that. That must have been really widely available. Okay, Mary Argent sampler. This is something that I think Carol Saltbox is working on. I haven't even started it yet. That's the antique. This is from um, what is this from? Oh, this is Needlework Press. It shows the antique and the modern on the back. I love it. I love the little person, the girl, and then I think that's a turkey. Love it. So maybe that'll be something I, I do a sampler with the house one a year. I don't know. And then this I just received from summer school. Love this, Margaret Campbell, another Scottish sampler, and there's that blue roof again, kind of an open brick, and then this very intricate fence and gate. So this says that she stitched it at Wilton Cottage School, and so it makes me wonder, is this the school, possibly, or is this the, the, the little girl's home that she was maybe pining away for. I don't know. Anyway, those are some of my favorites, and I wanted to share them with you. Uh, Samplers are not the only place we see homes represented, and if you know my channel, you know I'm going to pull out as much information on similarities and other textiles as I can. So I, I of course, immediately thought of uh, a quilt that's really, really well known, and it's actually very similar to this one that I'm, I have hanging behind me. That quilt is called um, courthouse steps, but the blocks are very, very similar to a quilt block called the log cabin. And this book I'm going to be referring to is the Encyclopedia of Pieced Quilt Patterns by Barbara Brackman. Barbara Brackman is well known, very renowned researcher into quilts and anti quilts. And so she has broken down pretty much every block created pre-modern times and documented the quilt block. And so the block that, I'm, that we're looking at today is this and then the variations of it. And it's called the log cabin. And the center is typically done in red to represent the hearth, the center of the home. And so there we get that image imagery again of home and comfort and uh, all the things that we love. These blocks appeared in, it can have several legs to it, and they appeared in magazines um, early in the 1900s and publications early in the 1900s and then became became several variations and ways to set them. So, And then, of course, you can do a pieced block. And this is actually a barn, but it's very similar to the really traditional uh, block that's very similar to this. Now, I don't have this piece done here because I have I have special plans for that, which I'll hopefully show you at some point. But we think of this as a schoolhouse block, but it's actually called the house that Jack built block. And it's from the 1930s time period. And it's, to, you know, it's classic in two colors and there's so many variations of it. I even did a tiny, a variation, really tiny 
It's just fun. Another quilt with a house on it is this one that I recent, this chart pattern that I recently acquired. It's actually originally in Quilting Treasures of Great Britain from the Quilters Guild. And it is this quilt right here. And of course, there's that beautiful red house. And it's surrounded by several, several motifs. And recently, the Quilters Guild reproduced a chart, a pattern for that, the Red Manor House coverlet. And you can see all around the little samplings of what mattered to that stitcher, to that quilter. And I love, I love the overlap, the, the swans around the house in the center. And then all the things that were meaningful and how many of these similar motifs pop up in samplers. Just... So this is on my short term list, but I have other big projects. I want to finish, finish before I dive into that. Another variation on that one is in Margaret Mew's newest book. I believe it's her newest book. Quilts from Laguerre and other musings. It's a quilt mania publication. Sorry about the glare. She reproduced, she, she, this is an original creation by Margaret that's very similar to the one I just showed you. Let's see if I can find it. Really, really fun. Really big long-term projects. Maybe one year I'll just concentrate on houses. That's it. This one's charming schoolhouse sampler. It's got that block in the center that we typically think of as a schoolhouse, but it's actually the house that Jack built. I think it became known as a schoolhouse later on. And then this lovely chart by Acorn Quilt and Gift Company. This last one was by Temecula Quilt Company. This one is an antique, I mean, uh, an adaptation or just an original creation of, for a quilt, of things that are very, very sampler-esque. So this is definitely taking a big look at samplers in cloth, reproducing them in cloth. So I thought that might be kind of fun to look at some other places you might see homes. And if you have a favorite house sampler or chart, even if it's not an antique, if there, I mean, there are some unbelievable house designs. Kathy Barrick has some. There, there's an endless. You can stitch houses the rest of your days. Uh, oh, I'll show you this too. This is that tiny block, but made 3D into a pin cushion. So that's kind of fun. Yeah, samplers and houses and alphabets. What more, what better, what more better stuff is there in the world, right? All right. So what have I been doing this month? Not as much as I had hoped, but a little bit here and there. And there are a couple times a year, mania, May and September, that I just kind of let myself take bites out of things and try my linen and thread combinations just with a few stitches so that I feel like, yeah, this is going to work. I get, I'm not sure if my linen and thread are going to be a happy match until I get a little bit into the project and I'm trying to 
do some stitching along the side to kind of check it out before I get deep and then realize this isn't going to work. But uh, sometimes I get too anxious and want to start stitching some motifs. So this month is my kind of month to just play and do whatever I want. It happened to be a really busy month too, so I didn't get as much done. But I did finish my tomato pin disc. I made the little tomato chart that Sherry, Colorado Cross Stitcher, shared with us, a freebie, into a pin disc. And I just padded each side with some quilt batting and did a herringbone stitch around the edge and then stuck in some pins. So I think there is going to be a tomato sewing set in my future. I have my pin disc and I'm ready to do pin cushion, scissor holder, all the things because they're just way too cute. I was hoping to have this done to show you. Excuse me. I did show you on Instagram that I was protecting, protecting my stitching with a layer of batting. The pattern I'm talking about that I stitched was, of course, this one, which I've shown a couple of times by Ellen Chester with my needle. The pattern is perfect. There is every instruction you would need to complete the project in full and I am just on hold waiting for a product that you put behind your stitching to give it some some body and so as soon as that comes I'll be able to assemble the entire thing but in the meantime I know I've talked about hem stitching before this is another option that uh, is offered in the chart and it's called the nun stitch and I don't know if this is going to show up if it's going to focus there you go so basically the nun stitch is a double vertical stitch and a double horizontal stitch that you do continue continuously around the piece and it really locks in the linen so you can go in and decide how many threads you want to cut away from your stitching and cut that off with no fear of it unraveling at all. And then on this project, I will make the eyelet stitches to lace it in the back. But I've been working on that nun stitch and it is beautiful finish. It's very relaxing. Sorry, that's not, there we go. It just has a nice clean look. I think this would be a really nice option, even on a, a marking sampler piece. If you didn't want to hem stitch or you didn't want to frame it, you could do the nun stitch around, trim it off, and then just lay it in a dough bowl or, or display it. It would be really great. So that'll be done next time. I've had several people reach out to say they're stitching that, so I'm really excited that, that other people are having fun with it. I do have a quilt project that I've been working on, and I think I may have shown it before. Now, this project is hand piecing, and hand piecing is different than English paper piecing. Hand piecing is where you mark the piece on the back, and that marking is your stitching line, and that is what you sew together, and there is no paper involved, and nothing gets pressed until it's done. So this is called, this is going to be a honeycomb or elongated hexagon quilt. And I'm kind of just going in rounds and rounds and rounds. It's a lot like a hexagon, but I started with, and I got this idea from some somebody's post on Instagram, so it's not original, but I'm creating my own little sampler in the middle. And so I've got my initials, I've got a bird, which looks is supposed to represent the stellar J's in my backyard. I've got my, my husband and me, a key, and then I think up here, I might do a little house and maybe a fir tree. I don't know. Tell me what you think. 
I'm not really planning this out. I'm just stitching it as I go. I think down here, whenever I finish this, I'll put the, the date. It might be fun when I, as I go out, because I will do different rounds, like this next round is light colors, just to add other cross-stitched pieces in as I go. I don't know. Or maybe just leave it. And I'm not sure how big this is going to be. I have a ton, a ton of pieces prepped with that line drawn. So we'll see. I have way more stitching. My hands could be busy 24 hours a day and I probably won't ever get all of it done. But anyway, so I've been working on that. Tell me what you think I should put on that. What else? Do you have any ideas? I'd love to know. And something that I haven't started yet, but I finally received all the materials to begin is, as you know, I've jumped in full force to the Katie Strachan box extravaganza, the Simple Harmonies box. And I've been watching now again for the second and third time, excuse me, her tutorials, which are excellent on how to cover the box. I've never done anything like that. I am, I feel like I'm a disaster with glue. She assures me that I won't, I'll be able to get through this. So I'll show you what I got. So this is the chart that you stitch in the order and layout that Katie describes. And all of this is linked in her, uh, on her website and also through her YouTube videos. She gives detailed instructions. Another incredible opportunity that we've been gifted in this stitching community is making this box. I never would have probably signed up for a class. This is something she's offering as a gift to the community and um, it's amazing. So I ended up going, I got my linen. It's the linen I chose and I don't know if this is going to show the color, but you, you have to use to make the box fit. To make the stitching fit on the box, you have to use 37 count Legacy. And so my color, my color of choice was Cloudburst. And my stitched color of choice is this floss. And this is a floss I've never used. And that was another reason I wanted to try this. This is Goblin. It's, she, Katie also has an incredible tutorial on thread. And it tells you what makes a happy marriage between thread and linen and what gives you the kind of coverage you're seeking. And I've never used Goblin, so I'm really excited to try that. And then her original box, if you haven't seen it already, was stitched in red with gold accent. And because I'm using the blue, I've got these silver accents. And these are for uh, the initials. Now, this doesn't look like it's gonna have enough contrast, but I think I pulled it out. I think it's gonna be fine. And honestly, I'm okay with a little ghosting and a little mystery because this box is going to contain some family history and I'm gonna personalize it. These, the initials will definitely be family initials historic family initials. I'm not sure if I'm, I'm not sure if I'm doing both sides of the family tree, if I'm only sticking with one side. I haven't quite come to that conclusion yet, but I'm, as I stitch it, I'm working through that in my brain and hopefully it will all come together. But I'm, before September's over, which is in just a few days, I will put in a few stitches on this because that was my intention but I was waiting on the linen. My intention was to start this for my birthday and for Sampler September. So it's almost started, right? It's kitted and that's partly there. Okay, what else did I do? Okay. Like I said, I took some bites out of things that I'm really itching to stitch on and just to see if everything's gonna align and, and make me happy. So 
I was dying to plow ahead on Rachel Howells. Dying to plow ahead on Rachel Howells. I saw her in real time at Tanya Brockmeyer's house when I was at summer school, and it is so magnificent. There's the antique. And there we go, another house. And this is a Welsh sampler. And I don't I have not stitched a Welsh. I have not stitched a Welsh sampler. And I'd like to know more about what is unique to Welsh samplers. That's something I really want to dive into. So I have the linen and I I chose 46 count dirty teacup. And I love this linen. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I I did not do much. I just did a tiny start and I'm not kidding. These flowers are no joke. And that is DMC folks. And I think it's beautiful. I, I might, I might succumb to silk, but for now, I don't know, pretty happy with that. I like the coverage and I like the color. So we'll see. I'm not going to dive back into this for a while. I'm trying not to have too many starts, but so far I really love the linen with the colors of the floss that are called for. So I think that's going to be a happy, happy marriage. I didn't start this yet. This was also my a September start that I really, really, really wanted to do because I want to stitch all the things with my name. And even though I'm not Susanna, it's close enough, right? And so I got this kitted up. I have Witcher Sprue by r, &R Reproductions. And I have the 103. So if I do a few stitches on Simple Harmonies and, and then the next day Susanna Eccles, then I'll at least have met my goal for September of to take a little bite out of the things that are really calling my name. Because there are things that I have some really long-term things that I'm working on, and there are things that uh, I really need to finish. I have no business starting anything, but I did put a few stitches in my Ackworth Friendship book, and I think Catherine from Stitching in Costume said she has this kitted up. And she might be willing to start it. So I say go for it. It's it's not, each page is not a difficult long stitch, but there are several pages. And I think I'm going to stitch all the pages and have my friends stitch their initials. Or maybe I'll dedicate a page to my quilting friends, a page to my stitching friends, a page to my long-term family friends who don't stitch. I don't know. I might do something unique with it. And then I and then in that case I would stitch little initials around the edge. I'm not sure. And I think I'm set on this. This is the fabric I chose for the lining. It's a, so of course you can already guess that I picked red for my floss. Started the first page. really fun and again this is one of Ellen's charts and it's beautifully laid out I have some NPI silk and ribbon so I'm going to use that I had another color picked out and I don't know I thought why why am I not using the red because red is one of my favorite colors I can't really I can't say it's my only favorite color but I, I really love red so there you go. And I think I like the red on this one and I think I'm going to be happy with that. So it's a sort of start. It's a experimental start. It's a, is this going to be a happy combo? Let me try it out start. And then I'm not sure how, when I'll get back to it or I'm not sure. 
but uh, this was my month to play. So I did. And then I had to be, uh, I had to keep working on the things that I've been plugging away at and uh, that really are long-term projects that are really require a, a bite every month or else they'll never get done. Of course, nothing will get done if you don't start it, right? But Dutch Beauty, and I see other people starting it. I saw some, oh, I've seen some gorgeous finishes. It's, every time somebody posts, I get so inspired. So I did make some more progress. Now I'm stitching mine on 46 count, so it, it's very, um, and I apologize for the wrinkles. I These are in my project bag. I did not press them. I got more of the swan done, and then I'm on to that vase. And that vase is one page. So we're getting there. I love the chart. It gives it gives you his, it gives you descriptions of the motifs and the meaning behind them. I love it. And as you, if you follow me, you know that I've been playing a little bit with the color. I've bumped up the color. I've changed the shading on this peculiar bird in the middle. There's still some debate. Oh, I've when I talk about this a little more in my next floss tube, I'll talk about some of the comments I've had about what kind of bird this is because it's just been really fun to hear from everybody and see what they get their input because it's all valid. So I'm really looking forward to getting some of those big flowers accomplished. So it's getting there little bites at a time. I try to spend a good week on Dutch Beauty. I want, I try to get a page done. That bird in the middle took so much time that I'm, I'm a little bit behind in my own mind, but you know. So this gets a lot of attention, but then I have to put it aside and work on something else because it's really intense. So that will continue to get attention every month until it's done. And then of course, with the recent passing of Queen Elizabeth, I had to start Annie Bates. And of course, if you know me, I like to start at the bottom. And I had a piece of 46 count up in the attic by Fox and Rabbit. And I had this gorgeous Averisois 103. This is number 109. It's a rich cranberry red. I could not put this down. This was fun. This bottom part, and I have way more linen than I need, but this bottom part was like stitching something on a darning sampler. And if you can believe it, this over one, these, it was fun. It was actually fun. I could see it. The linen, the holes are plenty big. And you know I've had eye issues this year, so that's saying a lot. And this was just one afternoon. I got that much done. I thought a couple hours of stitching, that's, I'm not usually that, I'm not fast for sure. And I usually don't make, I usually don't get very far. So, but I'm not kidding. This section right here, right, right under God Save the Queen was that is delightful to stitch, delightful. So I, I could have just stuck with this for days and I probably should have and finished it, but I got to take a bite out of it and that was good. And I got to stitch it on the day of the queen's funeral and that was very meaningful to me. So uh, there was something else. And then finally, and this one I decided, okay, you know, if I was giving myself marching orders, which, you know, I have, I have arguments with myself all the time, but Mary Snow, she's going to get finished. She's close. She's close enough for me to say, you know what? I'm finishing her. I stitched the swan the day the queen died. So I'm calling her the queen swan and 
I know a lot of people have already finished this and it's almost like the momentum is, you know, I can't keep up. <coughs> Excuse me, but it's close enough now. I feel like I can finish this. I can get this sent away and probably not framed by Christmas, but definitely done by Christmas. So I'm very excited about that. Sorry. All right. So that's what I've been doing this month. I I love samplers so much. I will always be stitching samplers. I'll probably add some smalls in here and there. Um, hopefully now the visitors have, you know, we things are calming down. Life will get back to a nice ebb and flow and I can get onto a routine of, of stitching and getting a lot more done. I do feel like my vision is recovering and I'm so grateful and I feel like I am stitching a little bit faster than than I was the first part of this year. So uh, anyway, I want to give away the absolutely gorgeous charts that were gifted to me by Melinda, who is Loganop Designs. And I'm, I'm going to show you her information right here. Oops. There we go. Logging up cross stitch with three S's at gmail.com. I will type this and add this below because I, I understand there's a little glare on here and I'm sorry about that. If you see a chart and you didn't win it, and you want it, ask your local Nita workshop, reach out, look for it online, and reach out to Melinda if you if you still can't find it. Um, they're lovely, and I'm very pleased and honored to be able to share these with you. So I responded, I'll try to respond to your comment if you're the winner. The first giveaway is for Sweet Sampler. And that goes to Tracy Wick. Tracy Wick. The keyword was sampler and Tracy Wick. So for any of these, please give me your contact information through a private message on Instagram. And I will mail these out to you. Okay, so I just need your address and you, you can take care of proceed with that. All right, the next one goes was for patchwork animal crackers. These are all by Logging Up Designs. And this goes to Carla Rigel, R-I-G-E-L, Carla Rigel. Congratulations, Carla. How sweet that would be for a grandbaby or even just for yourself. All right. Noah was the keyword for this Noah's Ark. And this goes to Hazel Nut. Hazel Nut. Loving Others. The word was Others. And this goes to Laura Davis. Laura Davis. There's one of those yummy houses. Next chart is love our home and they're just, you know, exactly what we, what I was talking about earlier, just the, the comfort and coziness of a house. And this chart goes to Suzanne Smith. Suzanne Smith, congratulations. Pilgrim's Pride, the keyword was Pilgrim. And this chart goes to Carleen Jewett. Carleen Jewett. Congratulations to you. This is so cute, this idea. Proverbs Dollhouse. And this keyword was Proverbs, and this goes to Stitching by the River. Stitching by the River. 
And then last but not least, and I hope if you get this and you decide to start it, if you're one of the winners, I hope you'll let me know. I would like to start this as well. And this is another beautiful, beautiful, large chart that's going to take quite a bit of time to finish. I don't want to open it because it's sealed so beautifully with a, a gorgeous sticker, but it is her M Mountain. M Mountain, and she gave me two with the floss drops. It is a Bristol Orphanage sampler. And the two winners are Elizabeth Mangold, Elizabeth Mangold and Michelle Gibbs. Michelle Gibbs. So if you, if you were, again, the lucky recipient of these, please send me your contact information, your email, um, or excuse me, to my email or to private message Instagram. My email, everything's linked in the description box below. And I will get these out to you. Congratulations. And thank you again for sticking with me. Thank you for looking at a little bit of my crazy September and what makes me tick, why I love samplers. Thank you again to Jean Lee for giving me a very concise and complete definition to share with you. If you like diving into history and all that com comes with textiles and cross stitch and quilting and notions and all that stuff, I hope you'll subscribe. I hope you'll join this adventure with me and um, I look forward to seeing you next time. Have fun getting ready for fall and we'll be talking about that next time. And make sure you make time for stitching. Take care, bye.